This video is going to show you how to draw the Circle of Willis. Um, this is appropriate for both Kin 100 level students and also the second half of the video will address some additional branches that we'd like the Kin 301 students to know. So first of all, I've just drawn a sort of simple schematic of the inferior view of the brain here on the board. Um, it's not beautiful, but that's okay. I'm going to point out that we have the pons right here, the medulla. This represents the cerebellum. We have temporal poles and our frontal lobes there. And the big X in the middle is, of course, the optic chiasm. So this, adding this level of detail will give you a little bit more context into where the circle willis is located on the inferior aspect of the brain. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start from the bottom. We're going to draw the vertebral arteries. The vertebral arteries are branches of your subclavian arteries. They arise in the neck um, in the transverse foramen of cervical vertebrae. And they're going to show up on our diagram here, coming up alongside the medulla. Now the right and left vertebral arteries will unite to create a single midline structure. So we'll just add some labels here. So number one are vertebral arteries. Number two, which lies directly on the ventral surface of the pons, is the basilar artery. And the basilar artery is only a single midline structure for so long because ultimately it is going to split again just as it uh, enters the area of the midbrain. The resulting branches are left and right posterior cerebral arteries. At this point, this represents your posterior circulation, and we're going to just jump ahead and look at the anterior circulation. The other artery that ascends the neck to supply the brain is the internal carotid artery, and we saw that as a branch of the common carotid arteries in a previous video. We always draw the internal carotid arteries as open holes because we have to show that this artery has been cut in order to actually remove the brain from the skull. And so you're going to get used to this kind of uh, marking. Almost immediately at this point, right near the optic chiasm, the internal carotid arteries are each going to split. And so we're going to draw their resulting branches, one this way and one this way. And this happens on both sides. So I'm going to put a number four right here for the internal carotid artery. And we'll put a number five. This is the middle cerebral artery. And number six is the anterior cerebral artery. So we now have three pairs of cerebral arteries. Posterior cerebral arteries, middle cerebral arteries, and anterior cerebral arteries. Now we still don't have a circle. We don't have an anastomosis yet. And that redundancy is really important for the brain. And so we're going to add in three additional branches from each of the posterior cerebrals right up to the internal carotid. We have our posterior communicating arteries. And there's a pair of those, a left and a right. We also have a single midline anterior communicating artery that connects left and right anterior cerebral arteries. And so now that you can see around the optic chiasm, we actually do have a circle, and this is referred to as the circle of Willis. For K100 students, this is the level of detail that we would expect. If you do choose to take KIN 301, um, we would ask you to identify a few additional branches. So I'm gonna add those in now. We had three pairs of arteries for the cerebrum. We also have three pairs of arteries for the cerebellum. I'll start with a pair right here that often get confused with the posterior cerebrals. So this will be number nine. These are the superior cerebellar arteries. You have two pairs of inferior cerebellar arteries. So we're gonna add a pair here and these are often referred to as ACA, which is anterior, inferior, cerebellar artery. And usually coming off the vertebrals, you have PICA or posterior, inferior, cerebellar arteries. We'll also likely ask you to look for the ophthalmic artery. 
which runs from the internal carotid with the optic nerve into the orbit. Okay, and that's number 12, the ophthalmic arteries. The last branch that we'd ask you to identify is this small midline branch here called the anterior spinal artery. And that's all.